little office in West Covina, California, it's the Foobar Show! Hey, what is up everybody? I am Joe C. And I'm Josh. And thank you all very much for listening into the Foobar Show. Thank you for downloading the pod on most major podcast apps, subscribing, and telling a friend like a champ. You can always reach us at Foobar Show. That's FWOBarshow.com. And FWOBarshow is your handle on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. Check us out. Drop us a line and we'll fill it up like a couple of foos. Ain't that right, foo? Civil. Yes. Well, I, uh, I'm i going to announce that this is a little bit of a short one. I'm going to announce what every lady that uh, Josh brings home <laughs> oh, for oh, a night oh. says. We're in, we're in for a short one here, everyone. <laughs> oh, hey, man. It's not the size that matters. It's the motion of the ocean. Right. Okay. I've heard that. I've, wait, no. I've never heard that before. Shut that's, up. that's what I meant to say. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I'm, you know what? I'm glad I got you fucked up right now. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty inebriated at this point. <laughs> anyway, uh, and thank you for it. I think uh, oh, it'll welcome. make some very interesting podcasts. I would hope so. Uh, but anyway, I'm excited, and we'll get into it a little further, but fucking Dodgers, right? Oh, my God. We're, this is going up uh, for download on Thursday, so by then, we've already seen two uh, Dodgers versus Red Sox games. And either we are... Very happy. very happy, or our anxiety is killing us. Or yeah, or we're very sad. <laughs> uh, but 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 tomorrow being uh, Friday, we're back in LA for three home games. Yes, sir. And that's uh, and and that's gonna be that's gonna make for some fun uh, baseball watching. Oh my god, I think that it really gives them the uh, mm-hmm. the advantage. But we'll go more into it in the sports. Yeah, right on, man. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, I just want to make sure my shit is together. <laughs> Uh, but, when is it? When is it ever? <laughs> um, <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Oh. Here's some here's some nerd music. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah. there you go. Nope. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> there you go. Nerd news is brought to us by who? Josh. Amazon.com. That's right, man. Amazon.com. Do you shop on Amazon? Would you like to support the show? Well, go to foobarshow.com. That's after below barshow.com. And at the bottom of the homepage, click on the Amazon banner, bookmark it on your browser, and do your regular Amazon shopping from there. Doesn't cost you anything, and you're supporting the show. Go for it, Josh. Wee! Amazon. Put it in your. Oh, wait, no. no that's, that's the other That's later on, though. Chill. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> to continue, um, so a lot of you don't know, um, If you, a lot of you don't know by now, uh, Daredevil has finally returned to Netflix. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so season three is actually available now. Um, it became available on the 19th, okay. uh, so last Friday, uh, right. as of recording this, and um, the full season's already on there. So... Um, I know there's been some there's been some news recently regarding these Netflix Marvel shows, and you know it's it's been kind of confusing because since they have their own ser- service now, okay. people have been wondering like, are they going to transfer all of their shows? Oh, onto that so new that's why it's service? kind of a deal. Yeah. So um, uh, recently, like a, cu- a few weeks ago, um, mm-hmm. they announced that they were canceling Iron Fist. So that they oh no way! Yeah, Did, wasn't that supposed to be pretty good? It was supposed. This last season they said was very good. Season mm-hmm. two, but. They were just canceling it because of, um, you know, contract issues with Netflix. Yeah. Um, so then, again, just recently they announced that Luke Cage is also canceled. So oh, they're no ca- way. Yeah, they're also canceling that after two seasons. A lot of people like that one, too, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. So um, they're, saying, they're saying it's not really because of viewership. It's uh, more of the tensions between, um, you know, Marvel and, uh, Marvel and Netflix right uh-huh. now. So, um... You know, according to comicbook.com by uh, J.K. Schmidt, Uh um, he wrote, you know, why, you know, Iron Fist and, you know, some of the reasons why we're canceled and it was because of tensions. And some of the tensions were, at first they thought low viewership, but then that ended up not being true. Yeah. Um, And then others were creative differences between Marvel and Netflix, as well as they couldn't agree to terms for season three, as far as like the money wise, because, you know, you know, uh, Marvel has their own service now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure they wanted more money. It's like, okay, if you want to use it, Netflix wants to use it. You got to pay us a little more. Interesting. So. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, the only surviving series is, as of right now are Daredevil, Punisher, and Jessica Jones. Uh huh. So you saw Jessica Jones. I've walked in on you uh, watching Jessica Jones, and <laughs> after I threw up, <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't talk about that previous part. But yeah, it's Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Uh, it was a dark day in this house. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> you, hey, you walked in. It's your fault. 
Anyway, <laughs> um, Jessica Jones is actually pretty good. Uh, I didn't see the first, the second season, but I heard the second season was fairly good as well. Okay. Um, but I liked it. Mm. I mean, it was dark. Like Kristen Ritter was actually pretty good in that. She was a good, dark, tormented type of character. Yeah. Um, but as far as you know, Daredevil, Daredevil was awesome. Uh, both the first and second season. Mm -hmm. I ha I'm definitely going to go to watch this, thir this third season because I heard it's even better. All right. And they're introducing characters like Fully, the Kingpin. Uh -huh. They're officially calling Fisk the Kingpin in, oh, this, okay. in this series now, or yeah. in this season now. And yeah. they're introducing Bullseye. So hmm. I don't know who, if you know who Bullseye was. Remember in the no. movie, in the Ben Affleck movie, that character Colin Farrell was playing? Nope. Okay. Well, <laughs> good. I'll have to rewatch it. No, you don't. Nope. No, you don't. All right, no, thanks. no, no, no. Or not um well bullseye in the comics he's like this you know assassin type of um you know character where he can hit anything okay like on target uh -huh. everything and anything without even looking so he's one of uh he's basically one of daredevil's greatest villains uh -huh. or nemesis so they're finally introducing him into the daredevil show hmm. so it's kind of sparking some interest like okay are they actually going to continue daredevil then mm -hmm. at least or which all indications are pointing to yes, because that is their most successful Netflix show mm -hmm. as far as like the Marvel. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens with that. All right. I mean, but I'm definitely going to watch Daredevil and I'll give a recap, you know, maybe once I finish the series. Um, so more in some nerd news, man. Um, we all know of your uh, hatred or your dislike right. of The uh, Last Jedi. I didn't hate it. I just like didn't it. like it, <laughs> but I, 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 I wouldn't say I hated it. That's 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 well, far from the truth. What I, was the scene that you felt was the one you didn't like? The particular scene that that, that. I specifically didn't like, yeah, was probably the final scene of the movie when when Luke Skywalker just you know dies and shit. You know what? I'm glad you you said that because uh -huh. uh -huh. there's actually a new article um, that recently came out Kay. again on comicbook.com. All right. Um and it was written by Cameron Bonal Bono Molo. Uh-huh. I don't know if that's a real name. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so recently they had been coming out with a lot of like comics um yeah. you know kind of telling the in-between story of the last Jedi and in one of the um in one of the comic strips, uh, Mark Hamill, bless his soul, he he posted <laughs> he posted on Twitter, yeah, um, uh, two pictures of the panels, and in the panel it shows the sunset, you know, where Luke's like standing on the stone, yeah. like on his knees, and then it shows him looking right at the sun, and it says inside the panel, and so it ends at it as it began, by the light of two suns before stepping into a larger world. Hmm. So, that kind of seems ominous, right? Well, Mark Hamill clarified this for everyone. He said, the Force killed Luke. You have to acknowledge the irony in his fate. Almost like an addict that kicked the habit cold turkey, remained clean for decades, only to reuse it just once, and then tragically overdosed. Dang. So, they're saying that that's essentially what he did. So, that's Be what happened. So, that's he what overused happened. It? He overused it all in one shot. With Dang. Dang. Because think about it, he said that he exiled himself for 30 years without yeah. using it, that the Force left I guess him. that's true. So that hmm. makes a lot of sense. That makes sense to me. I yeah, mean, but why couldn't they just tell us that? Exactly. And that's that's bad on Ryan Johnson's mm -hmm. part, mm -hmm. which is causing me for you know some concern for the next big series. Right, uh, But J.J. Right. J. J. Abrams is going to finish off this series. Okay. Um, he's actually going to bring back more Camel for episode 9. As a hologram, or we don't know yet. We don't know in what capacity. Maybe mm. like a force ghost, you know, like Yoda, or a flashback, or a flashback. You know, who maybe knows? Maybe that's where that. Maybe that's where they explain that. Maybe, yeah. You know, hopefully, I think J.J. Abrams will. Um, especially since there was a lot of fervor with the last movie. I think, yeah, I, he's yeah. usually the type of guy that likes to do fan service. Like he loves to do something. Yeah, for I the think fans. Uh, that's why they trusted him yeah. with that. And he's done a great job with uh, Star Trek. Oh yeah, the mm -hmm. entire series, all the way until like the the last one wasn't even that bad. Yeah. Star Trek Beyond was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm I have hope. I have hope that he will redeem <laughs> redeem all of our hopes <laughs> in uh, episode nine. They still haven't re released a title for it, I believe. Yeah. But, you know, once we get a title, I'll definitely announce that. Um, so to finish off some nerd news, um, for those of you that are listening today, you know, as this releases on Thursday, 
um, the 25th, Comic Con is coming up this weekend. Yeah, Comic Con. I've yes, never sir. been, man. Oh, I'm excited. Dude, it's going to be so fun. I'm glad I saved up some money for this because, <laughs> oh, it's going to be amazing. Um, so the dates, uh, it starts um, October 26th uh-huh. and goes all the way until the 28th. Um, right. So the Friday, you can, everyone could buy tickets today, the 25th. Everyone listening, you can buy your tickets today. And um, you still be able to get in. I mm-hmm. believe it's not sold out completely uh, for day for day one or for day two. Uh-huh. I always recommend going, uh, or not always, I recommend going um, day two. Um, Steph, your wife, she recommended it to me as well because she yeah. always goes day two because that's the Saturday. That's the heart of it. That's right? the heart of it because that's when you the headliners. get the headliners. Mm-hmm. You get most of the guests, most of the announcements. It's fun. It's really fun. So yeah. um, some of the headliners or some of the special guests that are going to be coming mm-hmm. are um, one, your Mr. Danny Trejo. Machete. 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 Um, also, Rob Leefield, the uh, creator of Deadpool. Uh-huh. Um, he's usually there. Uh, he was there last year, too. Okay. So I think now that Deadpool's, you know, really big. Oh, you know, yeah, he's, he's yeah, a lot yeah. More he, they've done a great job with Deadpool, man. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Greg Capullo, the artist that I got uh, um, an autograph from last year, mm-hmm. um, he's going to be there again this year. Uh, Emilio Rivera, for those of you that, wa- that watch uh, Sons of Anarchy, um, he's going to be there as well as the guy that plays Opie, Ryan Hurst. Okay. Um, he's also going to be there as well. Oh. Yeah, and then Tenacious D. Tenacious D will be there. Oh, shit. And they'll be there promoting their um, their animated uh, series, of Post-Apocalyptico. Is that out yet or not yet? I don't think yet. Uh-huh. I think that's coming out the week after Comic-Con because I okay. think they're going to release something that day. So we definitely got to go make that panel. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. to promote it. Because... They're also good. they also have their CD that just came out post post apocalyptic. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I gotta get to that. I gotta start listening to that. Um, and then also you have uh, Michael ba- Michael Bain. Um, yeah. f- I don't know if you're familiar with that name, but he was in Terminator. Yeah, the we, guy, I just uh, played a Terminator song yeah, before this. Yeah, the one from Terminator um, One that went back to try and save his mom. Okay, all um, right. He's been in a lot of other movies. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was in uh, Aliens. Yeah, yeah. The the lead uh, captain Michael Bean. Is it Bean or it's Bane? Bean? It's Bean. Michael Bean. That's why I'm just like, huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. Because I've heard okay. Bane like from announcers. That's oh, no. why. Okay, so it's I've Michael known him Bean. as Michael Bean. Oh, okay. That, that's like that makes Licking sense. the Bane. <laughs> uh, and then Jake the Snake Roberts will also be there mm-hmm. for those of you wrestling fans. Um, the comic book men from AMC. Okay. The three guys. Yeah, the three guys uh, yeah. who run the, what is it? Jane Silent Bob. Jane Silent uh, Secret, Secret Stash. Stash. Yeah, yeah, they'll be there. They're, they were there last year, too, so I'm okay. actually trying to get an autograph from them this year. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be pretty cool. Um, the original Red and Black Ranger will be there. Uh-huh. So Austin St. James and uh, the other guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. And then the second the second <laughs> Yellow Ranger will also be there. Uh-huh. And then uh, your favorite, you know what? Um... You like Animaniacs, right? Love them. You know uh, Ron Paul, Rob Paulson? Yeah, he's one of my fucking uh, voiceover voice heroes. heroes. He will be there. Oh, yeah. So you definitely got to get another, oh, or at least fuck. a picture with him, man. He was Yakko. He was uh, Pinky. He was Pinky. He was, he was um, Raphael, Raphael from the Ninja Turtles And Donatello. Cartoon. And Donatello. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, he, he plays all everything. It's, oh, it's so great. I, yeah. I can't great. wait. And then there's one who... Um, one guest that's showing up here that I kind of wanted your opinion on. Okay. Um, a Miss uh, we Chloe Dykstra. Chloe Dykstra, huh? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Why, why, why wouldn't I like to see her? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting. It'll be, we'll definitely be looking oh, at her. I'm not going to be a dick or anything. But, oh, oh, wait, what? No. But, uh, but I'm going to be like, what the, fuck, <laughs> <laughs> what the it. fuck, lady? What the fuck, lady? Why'd you do that? <laughs> mean you mean you got some words. We need some words. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I'm sure she's already gotten it from all the nerds. I know. She by now. Yeah, I'm sure she didn't make her... <laughs> Try to exile good old Chris Hardaway. Yeah, they, she attacked the wrong nerd. She attacked wrong the wrong nerd. nerd. Well, uh, which, by the way, he, he doesn't really post anything on his uh, Instagram anymore. anymore. He doesn't podcast uh-uh. anymore. He's the dude. Just stri- he just sticks stri- strictly to shows. Or, yeah, you know, so he, doesn't, he doesn't put himself out there anymore. I don't know if that's what his agent and management team are telling him to do, or if that's just something that's coming from him, where he's just like, "What the fuck?" Like, like I'm, I'm assuming it's his agency or, or his agent his or managers. you know his PR manager. Mm-hmm. You know, are probably telling him to stay, you know, stay low, like every other person that's been involved in Me Too or some right. Me Too. 
Like, you know, you don't really see too much from Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. as far as social media and stuff. But you see Which, his By name. the way, today, uh, today being Monday, um, I saw, didn't you send something or, or, or the Foo might have sent something? Who the sent Foo this? The Foo sent this. The Foo sent this to us today and it says that, uh, that Sarah Silverman came in, def- came, came out in defense of Louis C.K. saying, I let Louis C.K. Uh, masturbate in front of me plenty of times. Yeah. It's, it's fine. It was it consensual. Just, it was consensual. She said it was more of a power move for her, yeah. or, you know, than anything. Uh-huh. Which is, I mean, I think that's, a, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head when me and you were just, me, me and you kind of talked about it. It's like, they're just both weird. Yeah, they're just a couple of weirdos, yeah. which is like, okay, I, I understand where everybody else, the normal person, would uh, think, uh, you know, what the fuck's going on around here? Yeah, I think her her opinion, like, granted, okay, yeah, I understand she's coming in defense of her friend, and mm-hmm. in that situation, it was probably consensual. Yeah. Um, but, again, it's like, it's more of like, okay, can you defend the others? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> every, uh, other, ladies, ladies, was it right. a power move for you as well? I'm and that's sure why it's dangerous say, yeah. to come out in defense of a friend in these kinds of situations yeah. these days. I know she came out with, like, the good... You know, goodness in her heart, but Sarah, Sarah, sit down, <laughs> sit down. Uh, but yeah, he's been he's been hitting the circuit lately, Louis C.K. Um, he hasn't been paying for it either, no. so we'll see what we'll happens. We'll see what happens with that. Yeah, that'll be interesting. But anyway, man, uh, you said that was nerd news. That was nerd news. All nerd! right. <laughs> oh, he's r- tugging at the hot strings. <laughs> we'll be right back. Podcast listeners, Joe C here. Are you digging all the music talk and want to see what my band, The Fallen Electric, has in store? Check us out at thefallenelectric.com for all news, show dates, and contact information. Also, be sure to listen to our album, Never Seen the World, available on all digital music stores and streaming apps. It's time to get electrified. Let's just go and waste some time. We're back. We We are back. Josh. Yes, sir. You got sports for us? Hell yeah. All right. Sports with Josh. (laughs) What's up, everybody? What's up, dude? All right, ready to talk some sports. Well, as we discussed in earlier in the podcast, you know, Dodgers made it to the World Series. Second, uh, they did it, man. They pulled it out of their year fucking blue row. ass. Oh, they sure did. And that ass was sure blue because we got reamed the day before by the fucking <laughs> Brewers. God, yeah. man, it's like they put us over a barrel and the, said, the, look at <laughs> show the fifty the 52 states. They were, they, they were walking around like they had the rickets. <laughs> Oh yeah, they, they <laughs> sure not, were. It's not a good thing. Should, no, 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 it's not. <laughs> it is not. Um, oh man, but it's great. It's so great that, that they're finally in there. Uh, as of recording right now, we haven't had any games. Yeah. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, you know that's when we're gonna have our games, and hopefully, hopefully we have good news. Hopefully, yeah. I mean it's gonna be tough. Um, it's gonna be really tough, especially with those. Uh, Red Sox at bats. Mm-hmm. Those batters are freaking insane. But they do have a weakness. Um, as a, I was listening to the radio earlier, ESPN Radio, uh-huh. um, Brian Kamenetsky on ESPN radio, radio was discussing how he doesn't understand why uh, these, why everyone's saying that the Red Sox are going to run away with it against hmm. the Dodgers because the Red Sox aren't perfect. Like they, they're starting pitching. Yeah, they can. We, we can get to them. Mm-hmm. We can get to the starting pitching, and their bullpen's not great. Okay. Like their bullpen is not like it was for the Brewers. Okay. So looking at how we handled the Brewers, now I'm not saying we're gonna handle these Red Sox. Well, do you think that the Brewers taught us something? I think we learned something. We with the learned Brewers. a very important lesson I, from playing I, the Brewers this year. Definitely, I think we took a lot away from their strategy. Uh, yeah, we did. It was like, out of the box thinking yeah. with their pitching. They with the pitching, and then they finally. I think the last two games they finally just got it. Yeah, like game six. I think Dave Roberts really when he just let Ryu pitch. Mm. I think he just figured out. Okay, you know what? Let's see what they got. Yeah. Let's just throw everyone out there. You know what? We're just gonna play it. Mm. We know we got a game tomorrow. 
let's just see what they got. Let's right. not try and push anyone on ours. And I think that's how they figured out their bullpen. Yeah. Because you saw like three of the same guys from the day before, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, at that point, once you start getting familiar with pitchers, you know, it's sometimes it's a little bit easier to predict. Yeah. So, I mean, hopefully the Dodgers, again, figure this out. I think they're going to probably struggle for the first few innings uh-huh. um because it is their first time in fenway park and it's supposed to be 40 degrees tomorrow jesus yeah so it's gonna be a struggle for these guys for sure yeah um but game four uh game three is gonna be on friday uh the 26th it's gonna be at 509 dodger stadium uh-huh. uh next game of course is gonna be the 27th same time 509 pacific standard time uh that way it's eight o'clock eastern mm-hmm. and the same thing for sunday uh it's gonna be 5 15 so Whew, we may know. We may know by the end of the weekend. I mean, if anything, by Halloween, that'll be Game Seven. Yep, that's gonna be yeah for yeah. sure. I, we probably won't go anywhere for Halloween. And I know <laughs> I won't. Knowing all this, nope. right? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's gonna be great. So, again, over the weekend, of course, the Do- <laughs> you know the Dodgers making the World Series, yep. but there was also a little scuffle um, that happened the on Lakers? Saturday. Yes, sir. Yes, with, sir. With Mr. Rajan Rondo. What are the repercussions and, after all that shit? Well, they just announced uh, today, the um, 22nd, mm. that, you know, all of them were going to get suspension, suspension. So, per Bleacher Report, uh, Howard Beck, um, he reported that Brandon Ingram would be getting four-game suspension, uh-huh. Rajan Rondo would be getting three-game suspension, and Chris Paul would only get a two-game suspension. So... For those of you listening and for those of you who have seen this fight, it looks like Chris Paul was kind of being the aggressor Mm -hmm. because he was poking him in the face and, you know, forced him to punch him. But you could kind of see Rajan Rondo spit in one of the videos they released on ESPN. I highly recommend everyone go look at this. Dang. It's like he just... That wasn't clear when it was live. No, it was just like a little little spit, but it's Uh. just enough where it sprayed him in the face. And that's why Chris Paul reacted. Um... So he did do something, and again, it's because they had this beef going, dating all the way back to uh, how did it start? Well, it's started... like one of those Mexican, um, like like dude, it's like wh- a like a Mexican lady beef, where it's just like, why don't you like her? It's because she's a bitch. So what'd she do to you? I don't even remember. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, you know what? Maybe, maybe because think about this. This is what this is what really happened in uh, 2008. Um, they were playing each other, I believe, like the final games before the playoffs. And Rajon Rondo at the time um, was a rookie, uh-huh. and he looked at he said he yelled at Chris Paul. He's like, "You ain't gonna win, win no rings. You ain't gonna win Ooh-wee. no rings. You ain't that good. Dang. You ain't gonna win it, win any." And he still hasn't won shit. <laughs> so oh, no. like, ever since then, it's just been always talking shit to each other. Yeah. So whenever they play, if you guys look back on any game Rajon Rondo or Chris Paul play, mm-hmm. they're always chippy with each other. Like they just don't like each other. There's a there's just a hate. <laughs> You know? That's like a cartoon it's hatred. It's just a cartoon <laughs> hatred, man. It's like a fucking Flanders and fucking Homer mm-hmm. situation, except to the extreme. Like, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> they everyone's been asking them about it, and they just won't talk about it, really. Because uh, mm. back when it really happened, Rajon Rondo and Chris Paul's representatives both asked the press and everyone to just never talk about it. Or ask oh, them questions right. about it because they will not talk about it. Uh-huh. So there's more to the story, but Paul Pierce like kind of cooperated. He's like, no, these guys hate each other. Like, <laughs> no, to the T. There's there is no love lost between these guys. These mm-hmm. guys just legit hate each other. <laughs> That's like, crazy. Oh, he's like, this was a long time coming. Yeah. So fuck. We'll see what happens. They play again against each other again December 2nd. Oh, so that's the second game they're going to play against each other. So we'll see if it's another brawl. Dude, wow. We, they should promote it. <laughs> right? They should promote it like a fight. Right? Like a Mayweather. I mean, shit, if we could promote Mayweather and fucking McGregor, <laughs> let's promote Rondo CP3. Yep. yep. <laughs> Rondo CP3. Rondo CP3. <laughs> the happening you know what if it's not <laughs> happening out there it's gonna happen on this podcast we'll promote it we're gonna promote it <laughs> and we're gonna make little cartoon figures and we're gonna have them fight Rondo be- CP3 2 <laughs> we know what we should get we should get the little rock'em suck'em robots and put <laughs> yeah. their faces on each other and put a camera and on give it. them a basketball <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it wasn't just a four-game suspension that they got. They also got fined. So, per Tim Reynolds, uh, AP, an associate press writer, yeah. um, he stated that Brandon Ingram got fined $158,817, Rajon Rondo $186,000, mm-hmm. and then Chris Paul 
got fined four hundred and ninety one thousand dollars. What the fuck? So the guy that got the least amount of games got char- got fined the most. Wow. Yeah. So I think that's mostly because of what he did. He yeah. pretty much caused Rondo to punch him. Yep. By putting his hand. In. I right. think that was. I think they kind of. That's how they kind of quantified it. Wow. For that, you know, what Ingram did was shouldn't have happened at all. Yeah, so that's what incited it. That was the that. That's what ignited the dynamite. Well, it you was, know? I think they find him mostly for that punch, that last minute punch. Yeah, if he didn't, if he didn't jump in that mm-hmm. way, he wouldn't have got suspended. So I think that's why they said, okay, that's completely unnecessary. Right. So that's right. a four. Mm-hmm. Rondo got poked in the face, but he did spit at him. So we'll give him a three. And, you know, CP3 shouldn't should be poking motherfuckers in the pit, goddamn face. Come yeah, on that's now, true. that's two, but yeah. you get fined. Damn. <laughs> that's how that happened. All right. Yeah, they did a fucking ladder with that. <laughs> Ooh, so that's that's gonna be pretty hefty. But you know what, man? You know what? That wasn't the most exciting fight. That's right, at, man. At, at Staples uh, Center yeah. that night. <laughs> what happened? Tell tell the audience what else happened that <laughs> night. Like so, off to the side <laughs> where the cameras weren't even looking. Yeah. Uh, so uh, not everyone saw this, obviously. But as CP3 was walking out of the stadium uh, when he got you know disqualified and ejected, <clears throat> one of our our favorite local bands that loves to frequent the Lakers. California! The Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mr. Anthony Kiedis. Mr. Anthony Kiedis <laughs> and Mr. Flea were mm. watching the game because Flea and both of them were diehard fans. Diehard, like, to, like the to the nth degree, dude, man. Dude, they are there every game almost as much as Jack Nicholson. <laughs> if they can help it. If they can help it, dude, they will be there. They're in town, yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. Well, freaking Flea played at Kobe's uh, last game, remember? That's right. Yeah, he, he played, played the national. Yeah, it was dope. Mm-hmm. Um, but... They were there in attendance, and as they're walking by, they happened to walk past Mr. Kiedis, mm-hmm. who then yelled obscenities at Mr. Chris Paul, <laughs> and was getting quite <laughs> vul- vulgar and angry. He was he, he was letting Chris Paul have it. Oh, he was ripping into yeah, him. Yeah, he was ripping and into him. as he was ripping into him, uh, the security guards were kind of yelling at Anthony Kiedis, saying that, you you know, trying to hold him back as if he was actually going to do something. Right. Which caused him to get even more upset. Right. So, he got kicked out. I thought this was America! <laughs> huh? Isn't this America? I'm sorry, I thought this was America! <laughs> I know, man, he busted it right in March. Thought. That's what I fucking thought. <laughs> I mean, goddamn, man. Can a, can a goddamn fan talk shit to a goddamn douchebag? <laughs> Apparently not, I man. Mean, Apparently it's fucking not. God. Get that dog out of here! <laughs> fucking cat, too. Oh, that cat should have been dead by now. Yeah, well. Why does it keep coming back? Stop feeding it. No. Ah, all right. <laughs> In other news, <laughs> uh, as we all know, we play a little uh, pick 'em on this. Oh right, 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 podcast. right. We have I haven't picked yet. And how did we do last week? So and then uh, the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> so many things at once. It's too much. Hold on. I'm 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 stuttering now. Uh, I don't know what to do. All right. So what do we got here? <laughs> You didn't write it down? Yes, I did, oh. Dick. You just throwing me off. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Jesus. <laughs> I'm All sorry. Right. So as of right now, as it stands, I'm trying to check on what the Falcon score is because we are as they playing as we speak. This, they're playing as we speak, ah, okay, so okay. it's kind of a tough situation. Mm-hmm. So right now they're up ten to three. So we all pretty much picked the Falcons. So depending on what this happen, you know what this does. Well, I'll just ha- I'll just add one loss or one. Well, it's a wash. It. Yeah, yeah it's whatever. That's fine. All right. Mm-hmm. So for our other picks, uh, the foo ended up being Jesus. <laughs> he was five and one last week. Damn. And, and if he wins this one, he'll be uh, six and one. Crazy. Yeah. So but what he, was his one? So his one was the Ravens. He picked the Ravens mm-hmm. over the Saints. Mm-hmm. The Saints. Uh, they finally, you know, they finally beat the Ravens. This yeah. is so fun fact about that game. That was the only team Drew Brees has never beaten in the entire NFL. Really? Yes. In his entire career? In his entire career. Wow. So him... so they got him, him figured out, huh? Yeah, him, Brett Favre, and Peyton Manning are the only three players to have played and beaten every single team in the NFL. Oh. All 32 wow. teams. And that's only because, like, Favre went from the, you know, the Vikings... Or the Packers to the Vikings to the Jets. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> so as of right now, yes, the Falcons are leading. So 
we'll see what happens with that. Mm, okay. Josie, uh, you didn't, uh, you, you, you didn't fess so good, buddy. Yeah, well, your fucking eagles had to blow uh, it. I, I know, but don't blame me for your picks. <laughs> All right, so what yeah. did I do again? <laughs> so you picked the Titans, who lost. Damn. Bears, who lost. Damn. The Eagles, who lost. Damn. The Jags, who lost. Damn. The Ravens, who lost. Damn. And the Chiefs, who won. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully the Falcons win, because, uh, dude, you're, yeah, uh, it's not looking good for you. All right. Um, and All then right. Steph, she ended up with uh, three wins, three losses. She picked the Chargers to win, mm-hmm. the Pats to win, mm-hmm. the Eagles to win, so mm-hmm. she lost that one, the Jags, the Ravens, and she picked the Chiefs. Okay. So, so far, she's kind of, like, a little evened out. Me... I'm kind of in the same butt as you, but ah! <laughs> I picked the Chargers to win, so I got one. There you go. I lost with the Bears. Uh-huh. That's not 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 happy about da- that. Da- da- Bears, Bears fucked up. And then the Eagles, I'm I'm tearing up inside with that one as well. And then the Ravens, <laughs> and then hopefully the Falcons win because you know what? Oh, I can't. Geez. I know Morty. It's terrible. And then the Jags. And then I got the Chiefs right. So mm. right now the foo caught some ground with us. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll he's got traction it. now. Yeah, he's he's pretty much at the top with me Good and you. Him. Yeah, right. I know, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so these next games that I picked for this week, uh-huh. um, again, I picked seven games. Okay, kind of keep it a little lively. Yeah. So first game I picked is going to be the Eagles and Jags, and this one is in London. <clears throat> so it's going to be at six thirty in the morning on Sunday. For those Jeez. of you that are be watching football, and I will be up at six thirty in the morning. Oh my god! Hello, high water. <laughs> All right. So, the foo picked Philly, and so did your wife. Mm-hmm. Who'd you pick? <laughs> They're playing who again? The Jags. The Jackson Jags. Though. Philly's uh, Philly's favored minus three. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the Eagles. I mean, they just look good. They just fucked up this last game. Yeah, they sure did, man. They, I don't know what the fuck Cut happened. The they imploded and I'm like, they oh, man. Imploded at the end. Yeah. It, it pissed me off, but I got to stick with the homer pick, and yeah, I'm going to go with the Eagles as well. Mm-hmm. So the next game I picked is going to be Washington against the Giants. Mm-hmm. And uh, Washington, Washington. You're going to go Washington. <laughs> <laughs> you think the Giants are going to get them? It's going to be close only because I'm going to, I mean, I hate to admit it, but the NFC East is not that great. Uh-huh. So, I mean, we pretty much always feast on each other. All right. So this game's going to, I mean, it's especially since it's going to be in Metal Life Stadium. Okay. Or Met Life Stadium. I right. Think that's what it's called. Uh, it's going to be there now. So, I mean, I, and right now the odd is minus one. Mm-hmm. So that goes to show you how fucking close it is. Okay. When it's usually minus one, that means it means, okay, who knows where the fuck it's going to go. But. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna go with the Giants. I'll give them one. I'll give them one because I hate the just because I hate the Redskins more. Uh huh. But uh, you know, we'll continue from there. Yeah, the <laughs> Steph picked the Giants as well, and then the Foo picked Washington. Mm. So, so me and the Foo got it. The uh, Foo. You all right. The Foo. We'll see what happens. Next game I picked is Seattle against the Lions in Detroit. Hmm. Detroit's favored minus three. All right, all right. So the Foo picked Detroit, mm-hmm. and then Steph picked Seattle. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. All right. Um. You know what? I'm gonna go with Seattle as well, and mm-hmm. only because I have Russell Wilson, and I'm really hoping that he blows up this week. All right. So we'll see. We'll see, everybody. Sounds good. Next game I got is the Buccaneers against the Bengals. And in Cincinnati, Cincinnati's favored minus four and a half. Yeah, I don't know much about the Bucks this year. Um, are they supposed to be good? They are not great. Uh, uh, they're I pretty would, much even? They're pretty much even. I mean, the offense is, you know, it has its great moments, mm-hmm. but then all of a sudden the quarterback will have like a bone hit Did they play. lose last week? Or um, they win? No, they or, won. Yeah? Yeah, they won. Mm. They actually had a, they had a pretty decent mm. game last week. Uh, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with not them. You should go with the Bengals. Yes. All right. Cincinnati. You know what? I'm gonna go with Cincinnati too, just because I just don't trust the Bucks. Mm-hmm. They always seem to find a way to lose. That just seems <laughs> yeah. to be what I what I see. So right. yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Next game is gonna be the Ravens against the Panthers. Hmm. Baltimore's favored minus one and a half. Yeah, I was gonna say the Ravens myself. You know, Ravens. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're looking pretty good. With the exception of that field goal last week, you know, last night, mm-hmm. the field goal kicker, you know, <coughs> the kicker pretty much was beating himself up. He's like, 
yep. I lost the game. Yep. You know, and this guy's been like the one of the most reliable kickers in the league for the yeah, past three totally. years. So I think they'll correct it, and I think they'll come back. They'll, bounce, they'll have a bounce back game. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go with Baltimore as well. And then the next game is gonna be the Raiders against the Colts, and the Colts mm-hmm. are favored minus three. I picked the Raiders last time, and I learned my lesson. I'm never picking them again. Good so call, whoever man. they play moving forward. Good call. Because, oh, again, I didn't announce the other's picks. Uh-huh. The Fu picked the Bucks. He picked the Ravens. Okay. And your wife picked the Bengals and the Ravens as well. All right. And then the Fu picked Indy as well. Okay. And let's put that on record, that he picked against his own team this week. <laughs> <laughs> well... Yeah, you know, I, mean, I can't really blame them. At a certain point, you just got to be like, "Well, this is reality." They just traded their Pro Bowl receiver too, by the way, Amari Cooper to uh-huh. the Cowboys. Huh. So uh, yeah, it's fun. Oh, that happened today, guys. Sorry, okay. I didn't really want to talk about that because it's <laughs> beneficial for the Cowboys, and I hate. Them. <laughs> then moving on, the, uh, the last game I got going is the uh, Saints against the Vikings, and Minnesota's favored minus one and a half, and it's in Minnesota. Oh fuck. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it can go either way. It's, I'm going to go with the Saints. you go with the Saints? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Saints. Yeah, I, I think mean, they'll pull it off. I, they look pretty good. Yeah. Drew Brees looks pretty good. Yeah. And I think it's. I think they want revenge for what happened to them last year in the mm. in the playoffs, in the NFC Championship yeah. game. The uh, I don't know if you saw it, Fu. I doubt you remember. It's the. It was called the Miracle Catch, mm-hmm. where it was pretty much the end of the game. All they had to do was just knock down the football, and pretty much the defender just whiffed. On trying to knock down the football, and the Vikings receiver pit, got it uh-huh. midair. One second, already knocked off the clock. No time left. Dang. Turns around, runs for the end zone, touchdown, game over. Wow. Yeah. And that's how the Vikings got to the, N- the NFC Championship Crazy. last year. Crazy. Yeah, so, and there was a lot of shit talking after that game between those two teams. So, there's going to be no love lost in this game. Like, I'm <laughs> telling you. It's going to be chippy. You're going to see motherfuckers going at it. It's going to be awesome. Right on. Yeah, we should, right po- on. We should host a fight for that. <laughs> come on. So, again, I'll come up with the... Uh, I'll let everyone know the results next time. Mm-hmm. And back to you, Boo. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got a joint report today. Are you on weed? Give me some. I'll smoke you two under the table. It's from the ball. Well, I uh, I found this article on MarketWatch.com. Why are they talking about weed, you ask? Why? Well, the article is titled, Marijuana Stocks Fall in Worst Ever Day for the Sector. Uh, the tagline here is cannabis ETF tumbles 21% amid a five session losing streak. So oh. marijuana stocks suffered broad and sharp losses Monday, uh, the 22nd of October, and we're headed for the worst five session skid in over eight months as full legalization in Canada appears to have taken the shine off the sector despite early indications of strong demand. Dope. So people are pulling out for some crazy reason, maybe to distribute their money in some other capacity. I couldn't really tell you, but yeah, the that's um, odd. yeah, so it tumbled. Um, like, let's see here, a uh, the ETFMG Alternative Harvest Exchange traded fund MJ negative nine point thirty six percent tumbled nine point four by the close. Um, some shit went down. I don't want to have to translate this for the common guy. <laughs> some shit went down, and it doesn't look good for for stock. If you invest stock in in uh, the cannabis sector, yeah. But um, it, it's I, I don't know why. Like it's, people are saying that it's going to keep happening, and but I think what when it comes down to it, I think it's just going to be off to a rocky start as countries as developed as Canada begin to take notice in the benefits and harmlessness. Of cannabis, yeah, and I mean, think about it—the exclusivity of cannabis is gone now. Mm-hmm. So, th- and now that it's become, you know, popular, they're starting to think, "Oh, okay, maybe we're not going to be making as much money as we thought," right. you know, because it's going to start to kind of filter out. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why people are starting to panic, and yeah. then maybe also too because it's not technically legal here. Yeah, I believe once it's legal here in the U.S., it's going to boom. Because we're one of the, I mean, I don't know if we're high as far as the driving. Yes, economy. we are high. 
well, well I mean, we're high, <laughs> obviously. But, uh, you know, as far as our nation's, you know, global economy, mm-hmm. how, you know, where we rank. But right. I know we're one of the movers. Well, so. I was just talking about Aurora Cannabis uh, on the last podcast that we posted. Yep. Um, Aurora Cannabis shed 12.8%. Um, of their stock today in the New York Stock Exchange, oh. and they just went public. Wow! Like that's they just went not public. Good. So uh, others, such as like Constellation Brands, uh-huh. that are investing heavily, they took a um, a one point sixty nine percent drop today. Oh, wow! One point seven, pretty much. That must have that must really have to do with as far as reform, as far as legal reform. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it comes down to uh, it being legal in uh, Canada. That's what everybody's saying. It's not like you were saying too. Yeah. It's not as exclusive anymore yeah or it's not coveted as much as it was because exactly it's kind of a thing that you can just cross the border enjoy it and then come back home yeah and that's what made like amsterdam a place you know mm-hmm. or even like colorado when they were more exclusive right. everyone wanted to go to Locked up colorado yeah. and washington but now and that else. now that it's in more different states even in a lot of people's home states it's like okay where am i gonna go there now like it's starting the whole tourist portion of it is starting to kind of lose its luster right which is i mean it was gonna happen once, I think so. I you know, think so. Once once you legalized it, that whole touristy thing was eventually just going to die down. You know? If you didn't sell when it was high, then you were probably high. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's okay. all I got for the joint report today. Just figured I'd let everybody know. Smoke weed every day. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, last but not least, the music segment. I said a hit. I wanna rock! Well, this music segment is brought to you by Eargasm. Eargasm High Fidelity Earplugs, already trusted by 100,000 customers and growing. Enjoy your favorite activities without worrying about damage to your ears. Keep the noise to a minimum, but still hear people talking and hear music with clarity. Discreet design, and it comes with a lightweight aluminum case for easy transport. Click through the banner at foobarshow.com to get yours and help support the show. Eargasm, put it in your ear. Put it in your ear. <laughs> so today, Josh, um, because this was a little last minute, the reason we're doing we're recording on a Monday, and this will be the one we post on Thursday, is because I'm going to an escape room with a few friends on Thursday. Uh, and he's never coming back. Yeah, I may not come back. So I'm uh, <laughs> just like, let's just put something because we won't have uh, as much time to record. But, you know, let's make sure we have something for the peeps. It's going to be a Julius Caesar, Caesar situation where all the senators are just going to start stabbing you in the back. <laughs> and like, escape now, motherfucker. Probably, man. Probably. <laughs> but I was looking at Josh, and I was just like, dude, what are the best few songs? of the last 10 years and that, i drew a blank and you drew and i yeah i think we both drew a solid blank but i think songs that i still find myself they, it pretty much came came down to me yeah uh finds that uh, songs that i still find myself listening to uh in my everyday playlist that i have on my phone mm-hmm. are these three songs the first being uh the song from 2009 uh, it was very popular when it came out. I don't know that they've had any more notable efforts since this particular album, mm-hmm. but the ten- the Temper Traps Conditions album that came out in 2009, um, the song Sweet Disposition was featured on, what was it? Uh, K-Rock. It was on K-Rock for fe- a while. But in the movie, uh, it was like 100 Days of Summer or something like that. Oh, um, it was, it yeah, was, it was 100 Days of Summer. Yes, yeah. it was. Yes, it was. With, uh, with What's Her Nose and uh, What's His Face. <laughs> Just Gordon Love It. <laughs> And Chloe Deschanel. <laughs> That's the one. I secretly like that movie. Yes. Well, no it didn't suck. That movie didn't suck. No, it was pretty good. I liked it. Um, I liked it. I liked the soundtrack for that. So, movie. you know, let's listen to it. Let's listen to it again.
how it just builds for like a minute and a half, and, and then it just, it just fucking starts it hitting. Just, yeah, it starts it hitting that hard. Beat. Yeah, so yeah, it's a really cool solid. song to chill to. I know we're gonna get a lot of shit for this because uh, you know some guy's gonna be like, "What about this song from Tool?" You're always gonna get those Tool yeah, talking about course. Tool. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> not to say that Tool is a bad band. I fucking love Tool. Uh, but you're uh, gonna get those guys. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm just warning you now, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I this, used to this listen song, to this guy. All the yeah, time. The, these uh, these guys. Uh, I saw them live. They're really entertaining to watch. All right. And it's they sound better live, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I fucking played this song out when it came out. I just forgot yeah. the year it came out. Yeah, like, oh nine, man. Yeah, fuck, I can't even believe that it was that long ago. Nine years ago. Yeah, but no, when this came out, like I had it. I you know I bought it on my iPhone, put it on there. Yeah, I was playing this shit on my. Car all the time yeah. my sister is just like stop playing this fucking song <laughs> and then i also got the other song that they had as well uh-huh. um i can't remember the name escapes me but i used to listen to their two songs and they were pretty good and they, yeah. you know they're i'm kind of upset that i didn't kind of pursue them further but you know not bad yeah, what are you do? yeah. but anyway <laughs> <laughs> This other song that I came up with is a song that is still very much on the charts these days, too. They've mm. they maintained uh, this song on the charts. It's f- back from 2008, and it stuck with me because this is one of the bands that me and my wife connected with uh-huh. when we first started dating 10 years ago. Yep, and Kings of Leon. your wedding. Yeah, we played it at the wedding and all that shit. So Kings of Leon, uh, from their album Only By The Night, this song is You Somebody. I got the gist of it. Everybody's oh, yeah, heard, this song, heard song this song before. It's a Matter of fact, TFE, my band, they, we cover it. Um, I think, what is it? The uh, the second uh, set that we tend to play when we play a four hour show. We, we uh, you know, we shoehorn this one into the yeah, set. Yeah, I've heard you guys play this one. Yeah, yeah this one's I mean, fun. Yeah, it's a nice song. And Everybody like, knows it. Yeah. Everybody sings along. It's just one of those sing alongs. And yeah, it's, uh, it's maintained, man. It's maintained. It's good quality shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't. Kings of Leon, that was like at their height, especially mm-hmm. this one and uh, Sex on Fire. Yep. I know I hear those two all mm-hmm. the fucking time, and, which is sad because you don't hear a lot of their newer stuff, which is actually pretty good. It's it maintained. Yeah, it's yeah. still pretty good. So. I mean, you you hear it, just not as often as you do this one. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. like with The Killers, with uh, Mr. Brightside, it's still on the charts yeah, after all these years. Uh, what's the other one? <clears throat> What's the other uh, one? No, somebody you, told me. The, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's that the one. other one. That one, yeah. Those two are always playing. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the, I, 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 would you agree? I mean, this one whole maintains. Oh, it definitely. Holds yeah, I love this song still. Now, this one was very, very much just me. Um, I don't know that. I, let's let's face it. Queens of the Stone Age aren't as popular as they should be. No. I think a lot more people need to get exposure to Queens of the Stone Age, and this one came out in 2013 by their album Like Clockwork. It's one of my favorite songs. By them most recently now. If we're talking over ten years ago, that's a different story. Yeah, songs, for the songs for the Death is an awesome fucking album. album. Yeah, uh, but uh, this one's more recent, not the most recent one. But like Clockwork really stood out to me. I think they changed their sound just enough to make it sound different, mm-hmm. but still stay true to their Queens of the Stone Age roots. So this one's called "I Sat by the Ocean." <laughs>
Yeah, what do you think of this one, man? Oh, yeah, I love this song. This was on Guitar Hero. Or, uh, really? actually, not Guitar Hero. Um, what's that other one? Rock Band. It was in Rock it Band? It was in Rock Band 2. Oh, interesting. And I think it was in Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero World Tour. Yeah, I remember playing this. <laughs> I love this one. This was, oh, yeah. I just forgot. I'm telling you, man, I'm bad with years. I'm bad with years. Yeah, I did yeah, it. Yeah, I am too. Uh, yeah, I just, I can't believe it was already, it's been that long. Yeah, it's been already five years since this thing came out. Fuck. And uh, they've had an album since. Oh, that album was pretty good too. I liked yeah. it. Yeah, this, 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 this entire Like Clockwork album is freaking great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, I, mean, I recommend everybody just check good. that one out. I mean, they're just good. They maintain, dude, yeah. there's not, there's not that many bands that um, just keep it going. No. You know, I mean, like, they keep their quality just up to top notch. I mean, you got. In my opinion, Queens of the Stone Age. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Kings of Leon. Kings of Leon. Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys for sure. Yeah. They can do no wrong. No, no. Um, fucking, what's Foo that Fighters. band? Foo, well, yeah, Foo, Foo Fighters. Fighters. Can't leave um, Cage the Elephant. Yeah, that's right. That's true. They do yeah, no Cage wrong. The they have not done wrong once to me. Young the Giant? Mm. I mean, they still kind of keep If you're that. into that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not that yeah, there's anything wrong with not that. Not there's anything, anything wrong with that. No. <laughs> uh, um, and, and a handful of others. I mean, anything that uh, the boys from uh, at Muse. the drive-in and Muse. Um, well, I, 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 you know what? Muse is one of my all-time. Like they're in my top ten. Yeah, they're in my top ten, hands down. They'll they'll remain there unless some shit goes down. But these <laughs> last gets me, dude. These last couple albums. Um, they took the electronic oh, yeah. up a notch, Too um, much. almost a little much for my taste. Almost eighties ish. Yeah, eighties esque, um, and it, it was a little bit of a turnoff to me. But I, I was willing to look the other way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Muse, as uh, you yeah. know, they, they they were around and they were huge at a, at a pivotal moment in my uh, adolescence. <laughs> So I'm just I can't just turn away. You they know keep, what I mean? They keep you from uh, putting that knife in you, man. You know it. Is those dark days? You know? So whenever I'm sitting on the toilet with a barrel in my mouth, <laughs> I just think to Muse, Muse stopped me. <laughs> Muse stopped. Jesus Super Christ! Ma- this took a turn. Supermassive black hole had a different meaning for you, didn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I think it's a good way to end it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well thank you all very much for listening into the Food Bar Show. Thank you for downloading the pod on most major podcast apps, subscribing, and telling a friend like a champ. You can always reach us at Food Bar Show. That's FWOBarshow.com. And FWOBarshow is your handle on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. Check us out. Drop us a line, and we'll fill it up like a couple of foods. I've been Josie. I've been Jeff. And... We're here to say don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick.